Well, you know, partnership. I'm all about partnerships. You know, I mean, I was on a seven-member panel here, at Columbus City Council. Uh, you have to you have to work the small p politics to make sure you get things done. Uh, and believe me, in in county government, Franklin County government, with you've got 26 floors of Franklin County government, everything is by board and committee. Uh, you have to know how to be able to move things along. And I'm quite proud of the fact that we've got we, there have been tremendous roadblocks to getting the application of technologies uh, mm -hmm. uh, in place for the clerk's office. Why is that? It, well, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it, it's one of the nice things in, in, in Secretary Bruner's office is that she has access to both her hardware and, uh, you know, she, she has the whole ball of wax when it comes to the, to, to, to the technology. I have to go <coughs> to a data board. I sit on the data board. And, and the data center doesn't report to me, it reports to the auditor. So you can see that you have to, you have to, you have to sort of work the angles to make sure you get things done. When it comes to e-filing, which we're in the process of doing, um, uh, it d directly affects my office. However, I sit on a seven-member panel, which is the e-governance board. <laughs> so, so it, you know, you have to figure out ways to make these things that tend to be cumbersome less cumbersome and more accessible, and you have to figure out a way to cut through the crap without offending people. And I think I've spent the last 13 years doing that. So I'm proud that we're moving forward with e-filing. Uh, and I can tell you the legal community is delighted. And uh, it will be a year in December that we've had online access to records outside the courthouse. Uh, and that was that was some heavy lifting, and I had to, you know, but we got it done. So, so I'm pretty happy about that. Yeah. And that's the kind of stuff we do in the Secretary of State's office. Yes. How do you think the uh, digital balloting is? Gone. That was inter introduced, uh, well, eight or nine years ago, I guess. I mean, computerized voting. And, uh, it's it, 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 we're not ready. That's not ready for prime time. And I know that some of the Move Act folks, some of the some of the overseas voters, are getting it that way. Depends from some other states. I I, I think here in Ohio, you can get uh, you can receive your ballot, but you have to print it out and, and mail it back in. I, I think we're we're not we're not ready for. Uh, yeah. What we are, what we do, other states are doing that we need to take a good look at is online voter registration. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, online voting is is far away still because it's not secure. And if people, if we don't have a secure system that people can trust, they're not going to feel like voting. But as how? A, but what I don't understand is, I can do my banking online. Mm -hmm. I can pay my income taxes online. Mm -hmm. I can share all sorts of my personal right. information, and that's secure. Why don't we have? Well, how I'll hard can it be? To let's, come there's up with two that. things here. We, we have registration and we have voting. Voting, you know, is precious and it's, it needs to be private and it needs to be secure. For every for, for for every online application, it seems that there's a there there's a hacker for it. But online voter registration <coughs> is something is a next step, and it's going to take some doing because our system right now is based on your signature. So you've got young folks right now who come and say, you know, well, yeah, I, I'm kind of interested in doing this voting. How do I go about doing it? Well, you've got to fill out this card, go to the library, and they're like, what? You know? So, so I mean, you can see we've got a disconnect here. Uh, online uh, banking, you, they have figured out a, a way to have you sign without using a signature. And that's what they're doing in other states. Well, they can be pretty intrusive on the information they ask for to, yeah. to provide security, yeah. whereas that intrusiveness in a voting situation gets to be a big brother situation and people pull back from that. Voting, so that's voting one, is one That's thing. one big hurdle. The, the registration thing, on the other hand, is something that we really need to take a serious look at. For, I mean, you know, there's, I can't tell you how many, but, but other states are doing it. Indiana just, just released a, a, a smartphone application for voter registration, which is the next step on their already online system. So so uh, I, I like it because it, it decreases that uh, opportunity to, for fraud that comes through the middleman. And if you know, I, I know that my opponent was in here probably talking about ACORN and voter registration fraud. This is people not living where they vote. Is that right? Yeah. Anyway, um, uh, you know, that when, when you have a, a system where people can talk directly to the Board of Elections, I think that you're eliminating that I mean, not that I'm saying that I would eliminate voter drive registration drives, but I'm saying that if you're reducing that impact of a possible fraud, don't you think? Yeah, I, I, you're saying that the, the ACORN fraud doesn't happen, is that what you were saying? A, we know that there were two instances, is that right? Were there two instances that were prosecuted? 
Do you know? Yeah, actually, I think I, there, I were don't two, know if there were two out of eight and a half million voters. Yeah, and that was a voter registration issue, mm -hmm. right? And you know, I, and I've taken a strong stance on fraud. As a matter of fact, in my office, when I came into my clerk's office, I found an incidence of fraud, and I brought in investigators. We did an investigation. We prosecuted, and I've, she's doing four years in jail and uh, is uh, paying restitution. So uh, there, there will be a zero tolerance for any kind of fraud. And not only that, I want to make sure that we're investigating all allegations of fraud, whether it's registration <laughs> fraud, voter fraud, or voter suppression, because the, you know, we've got this urban legend issue out there. You know, what is fact and what is fiction? We need to make sure that we understand the facts more fully before we spend you know, millions and millions of dollars uh, you know, in, in applying things to uh, eliminate a, a, a problem that doesn't exist. I think there were two in Ohio. Mm -hmm. Now, there were some in other states, too. But it, again, ACORN's not doing business in Ohio. Wasn't that the same thing that we had in 2000 and 2004? I mean, what? Kind of the same approach was taken that, uh, wow, this corruption is rampant. You know, all the kinds of problems are going on. <clears throat> is it? I didn't think it was. But well, it, it, see, that's the, the think is the operative word here. We need to know. And so that's why I want to make sure we do a comprehensive review that, you know, I want to look at to putting two investigators on staff because what happens is that this is a Board of Elections issue. And oftentimes they don't have the resources to follow these things. But we need to make sure that we pursue it. any and all allegations of, of, of fraud uh, and make sure people understand the facts. And we need to continue with post-election audits. Uh, but people need to feel that it is a problem that there's this perception of voter fraud out there. That's, that's the problem more than the actual instance. Uh, and, and we need to make sure that people have all the information and that we're doing the appropriate investigations uh, into any of these so that people understand that. You are correct in that the urban legend, or you know, yeah. even if it's not a legend, however you think about it, oh, yeah. one of the topics on our forum, on our, on our website in Cambridge, is that yes. is about voter intimidation goes, and those it, kinds of things. It goes well, what can you do to investigate them all? But okay, like you're going to investigate real. them. But then how do you get the word then, out so people might believe you? Well, you have to make sure that you've got all the investigatory information there, and you make sure that they get the information. You know, they they have to have the information so that they understand it. You know, there there are people who perpetuate this because it perpetuates their own agenda uh, to keep people home, and that's that's not the American way. People need to have access to the ballot. They need to be able to know know that they can vote. Their vote's secure, uh, and and uh, we need to we need to work hard on that. Has anybody manipulated that in 2000, 2004, that same? I mean, created urban legends? Yes. <laughs> I don't think they manipulate that. You know, I mean, we, we know that there was, I mean, if you look at the League of Women Voters lawsuit, you, you know that over the years there was a misallocation of resources, and we know that. And that's a lot of that has been corrected in the past four years. If uh, you are elected, you know, we've asked this question of the other candidates, mm -hmm. you know, there's going to be a huge hole in the state budget, next budget. Mm -hmm. Where would you look at in the Secretary's of State office to make your contribution towards cutting that budget? After you hire the two investigators. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, again, as the services, 72% of the budget. Only 13% of the Secretary of State's budget comes from the General Revenue Fund, which is the big hole in the budget you're talking about. That's the budget right. that has the big hole. We can, If we continue to augment and be aggressive... About Where do the rest of the funds come from? They're, they're, 72 percent is from the business services. The rest of it is grants, and then 13 percent is from the general revenue. Okay. Okay. So would you have to increase fees then? I don't believe we're going to have to increase fees, but I think that we can be more more aggressive, uh, more assertive in making sure that we we're, we're helping small businesses grow and we're registering to do business in Ohio. I think we can grow those numbers. We're at the end of our time, guys.